All right, class, so this is an explanation video for solving a multi-step synthesis problem, and I've got problem in caps because this is a problem. Um, this is really the, the most difficult type of thing we're gonna run into in organic chemistry because it requires not only the sort of problem-solving um, you know, strategy that I'll be talking about in this video, but also it requires uh, you know, a, a catalog knowledge of all of the reactions that we've talked about to this point in this class. Um, and so it just, it's, it's, you know, if you don't have those um, reactions in your back pocket, you're, you're not going to be able to do a problem like this. So this is definitely, you know, a little bit more difficult than I would expect um, on the exam, but it is a problem that is really good exercise. It's really good for you to think about the different reactions that you know and, you know, sort of test yourself on that. And also I think the problem solving aspects of this will be really helpful for simpler type problems that we're gonna run into that you will run into on an exam, for instance. So this is my target compound. Um, the rules for this, I think, just said start with simple alkenes. Uh, as you'll find out in the video, I'm gonna, I'm gonna squish that around a little bit to what simple alkenes means. Um, but I think that's fine. So anyhow, the first thing I'm gonna do when I'm looking at my target compound is to really break it down, really sort of say, well, what am I seeing here? You know, what can I sort of make notes on right away? And, and I think the first thing that's gonna jump out at us, and I'm just gonna number this as, you know, sort of point one or note number one, is an epoxide, right? That is um, very obvious. It's sort of a, a unique looking three-membered ring. I've got the oxygen there. And so right away I'm saying, okay, well, if I've got an epoxide, I know that that's gonna be formed using MCPBA is probably, um, MCPBA is probably how we're gonna end up with that epoxide there with some inert solvent. Um, so maybe we'll write MCPBA um, CH2Cl2. So we'll use dichloromethane, um, which is a pretty reasonable way to, to form that epoxide. So, you know, here I'm sort of looking at this piece. Definitely we'll have an alkene here, treat that with MCPBA. That gets me to my epoxide. So that's step one. And remember my mom's advice, do one thing at a time, right? So one thing at a time, we've dealt with that. So let's move on. If you try to do this all at one, you know, all together in one, you know, go, your your head's gonna explode. So just just don't do that. So step two, or sort of note number two, I'm gonna I'm gonna talk about this ether. So here we've got an ether, um, and you know it's pretty obviously an ether. We've got an oxygen. We've got two different R groups. So we need to think back. How do we know how to make ethers? Do we remember any synthesis that we use where we form ethers, or what do we know about ethers? And looking back. If we look all the way back to section 6.2, that's where we're talking about this SN2 reaction for the first time. So here's our key mechanism. We've got our boxed mechanism where we're doing this SN2 type reaction. We've got a concerted step where our nucleophile attacks, uh, you know, an alkyl halide. We've got this transition state where things get flipped and then we form this product. So if we actually flip the page and we look at the example reaction that they give us, they give us this methoxide, so sodium methoxide. So really sodium methoxide, right? That's gonna be CH3O minus. And that's gonna be attacking our alkyl halide, kicking off the bromine as our leaving group, but leaving us with what? An ether, right? So here we're forming that ether. Um, and this is the strategy that I would employ uh, to form this ether. So if we imagine putting, let's say, these two pieces together where I've got this alkoxide um, coming together with this alkyl halide. And here I'm saying um, earlier, you know, I don't know if this technically, according to your textbook, would be considered a simple alkene. It's probably pushing the envelope a little bit since we've got this bromine on here. Um, but we could synthesize this as well, right? We could use a um, you know, an, an end bromosuccinamide to, to synthesize this is a reaction that we've looked at before. But I think for our purposes, we're just gonna say that this is allowed and I think that that's probably a, an okay thing to say. So here we can imagine an SN2 attack, kicking off that bromine and leaving us with our, you know, our ether that we're sort of hoping to get. So then the last real piece here, and you'll notice that I, I showed an alkene here because I know in step one, or you know, this part, we can do an epoxide, epoxidation to form that epoxide. So this would be my, my you know, one of my starting materials, we'll say. So put a box around that. So now really it's, it's a matter of forming this alkoxide, 
um, how can we make that, sort of what does it look like. So we'll put a three over here. So note number three, we want to start from an alkene, right? So can we imagine starting from this cyclopentene um, to form something that looks similar to this? And in my mind at least, it seems reasonable to think about this diol. So if I can imagine forming this diol, then I know that I can form this alkoxide simply by treating with sodium metal. Um, so one equivalent of sodium metal will get me to this alkoxide. Again, we'll talk more about that as I walk all the way through it, but you know, those little things, like those little reactions, the better you are at your catalog of reactions, the more you have in your back pocket, the easier this process is gonna be. So now I think we're, we're sort of ready to, to see if we can put it all together. I'm gonna start from this cyclopentene. I'm gonna use this as my other simple alkene. I'm not totally sure that this bromine, you know, is, is, is a fair game, but I, for our purposes, I'm gonna say it is. Um, so let's, let's go ahead and start our synthesis. And the first thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my cyclopentene and I'm gonna react that with some peroxy acid. So we can just write peroxy acetic acid. I think that that's, that's reasonable. And then we'll just do that in water. So if we do that in water or H3O plus um, or H plus, any of those are gonna lead us to this ring opened epoxy, or excuse me, um, diol product. So we're gonna form the epoxide first with peroxy acetic acid, then we're gonna do acid catalyzed ring opening to form our diol product. And that's gonna be a trans diol, right? So the stereochemistry there is very important. If we wanted to make this as our, you know, trans um, or syn addition, excuse me, if we wanna make this as our syn addition product, our cis product, um, then we would use potassium permanganate, right? Um, so, or excuse me, osmium tetroxide getting ahead of myself a little bit, we use osmium tetroxide. So here we can now take our, um, you know, our diol, and if we react that just with sodium metal, so here sodium, um, you know, with a, a little zero that indicates sodium metal, that's how we're gonna turn that alcohol, one of those, into an alkoxide. So if we use one equivalent of sodium metal, we will end up with this product. This is what we wanna use um, for our uh, SN2 reaction. So here we're gonna do a backside attack, kicking off the bromine as a leaving group. And now we're getting pretty close. Oops, so we still have an alkene here, getting ahead of myself a little bit. So now we're at this stage, right? So sort of ignore this little mark that I've made here. Um, we've still got our alkene, we've done the formation of our ether. So then the last step that we need to do is just make that epoxide, so convert that into an epoxide. So I think using MCPBA, and here really, we don't need to specify this, the solvent, I don't think. Um, so if we just write dichloromethane, that's good. If we, if we just wrote MCPBA, I'd probably just give you the benefit of the doubt there. Um, it's better definitely to write dichloromethane, write an inert solvent, just so we all are on the same page. We know that we're gonna stop at the desired epoxide. Right, if we had H plus down here, um, H plus would then sort of catalyze that ring opening uh, to form our di reform a diol here. But, but that's basically it. So we've sort of successfully worked our way through here. Um, you know, the keys here, I would say that this bottom step, right, we definitely need to be comfortable with that. This SN2 reaction here, I think is, is again, definitely we should, we should be comfortable with, the, with making ethers. Um, you know, forming this uh, trans diol using proxy acetic acid and water. That's, again, of course, very important. We, we need to be able to be comfortable with that as well. Um, so this would be sort of my strategy of how to, how to go through this problem, um, and I hope that helps.